All Bay Music Magazine. We got another interview. Uh, everybody can announce who you are and where you're from. I'm Des Bang. I'm from the Devs of Cap. Roscoe Fetty from the Devs. Top of the 20s. I'm Mad Guy Devo. I'm from the Devs. The top of the 20s. The 8 to be exact. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and what inspired you guys, you know, you guys' stage names? Man, I ain't gonna lie, my first when I was first start rapping, I had my first name was B the Bang. Like I had got it from my brother B the Weeder. And uh I just start I just grew up, you know, like I had to like start my own lane and shit like so that's why I changed my my name now to Des Bang. Cause I I didn't get tired of everybody calling me B the Bang, but like when I, I wanted people to call me just by my name, you know what I mean? So when when some people call me, some people see me and be like, Beetle, what's up with it? And I'd be like, man, just call me Bang. So yeah. that's how I end up changing my name is Des Bang. Uh, shit, bro. I got the name Roscoe Fetty. I got the name Roscoe in high school. I used to be hooping and shit. And um, after my cousin died, Drake Fetty, um, I just put the Fetty on the Roscoe. You feel me? And, you know, Fedro Pay, that's another minor key. Um, I got that from running around the streets. My niggas from Hunter's Point gave me that name, so that's yeah. how it came about. Yeah, so my name is Mac Guy Devo because them is my three alter egos. You know what I mean? I'm a Mac. I'm godly when I need to be, and I get go Debo mode when I gotta go Debo mode. So I put them all in one, and and got familiar with my alter egos. So that's how I came up with Mac Guy Debo. Okay, so now. What's your guys' story in terms of music? Like, when did you guys start making music? And I started, like, my first song I ever did was probably, like, 2005 or some shit like that. But that was on some regular shit. Like, that was on some just, like, some hood shit. But then the first song I ever did was called Nobody. And that was, like, that, that I say that was my first song that everybody started listening to. That was the kind of, that was when I was beat a bang. Like, that's what made my... That's what gave me a stamp of who this nigga is rapping. You know, I did a song called Nobody. And basically that was probably like 2014 or something. So I guess I'd say that's when I made my name into like the music world. Or that's when somebody would be like, that's when he start rapping, 2014 or something. That's mm -hmm. when I did that Nobody. And it was history after that. Oh shit, nigga been rapping for a minute. Uh, old school making tapes in school or whatever, but uh, when nigga probably started taking it serious, probably when Phil probably first started early on with the with the Hood Rich mixtapes in the Sim City and my blocks, I think that was probably the first time nigga recorded something with somebody and they actually pressed it up, you feel me, and then he just took off, so you know, nigga been rapping since about that long. So me personally, I've always been a game spitter. So I just always talk shit, so I'm spit. I've been on a bunch of intros, outros, at least a lot of the top artists around here. It's Jay Style and Lil Blood, Shady Nate, Phil, D-Lo, Sleepy D. Yeah, I did stuff for Thiz. It's, I've been talking and motivating and just how I got into, got into it is just like, like, get in there and do it. And I, Beetle Weeda was like my first inspiration when it comes to rapping because that's who I was all <coughs> around and that's the brother from the hood. So. Shout out Beta, man. Yeah, so of course Beta, and then you know Phil just got the hustle so it's like taking both of their swags and mixing them up into my own swag and making it build. It's just both, a bunch of the Oakland Bay Area artists motivated me to rap. From North Oakland, East Oakland to West Oakland, Mr. Fab. You know what I mean? I went to school with him. Uh, Way back in the days, so I've been around him, talking shit, swallowing spit, doing what we got to do, and that's just what made it happen for me to start talking shit on him. So how did how did you guys' upbringing in Oakland uh, influence your career in music? Basically, like I think that I think Oakland inspired my music based <coughs> off like the topics and the, and the uh, situations and shit that I went through in the streets. That'd be the same shit I end up talking about in my music, like. Nine times out of ten, half the shit that I be talking about is something that I didn't already did. Like, I ain't trying to keep doing the shit, you know what I mean? But I didn't been through them situations before, so 
that that helped me be able to. It's like uh, it's like a, uh, it's like therapeutic. It's like therapy when I go in there. You know what I mean? Like, it's like I go in the studio and be able to open up and talk about some shit that I can't talk to everybody else about. You know, so that's the type of shit that inspired me. I think. Uh, shit, growing up in Oakland, uh, just, you know, Oakland got a unique culture of its own, really, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's like a melting pot for a lot of shit that go on in a lot of different inner cities, you know what I'm saying? So, when you got, when you got that kind of history of, you know, motherfuckers game spitting, you know what I mean? When they shot the Mac here, that, that was big on Oakland culture, that's still there, and then, you know, you got the motherfuckers with the militant shit, the panther shit, and we got the, it's the city of dope, you know what I'm saying, so there's so many different things you can talk about just being from Oakland, you know what I mean, not one specific thing, and uh, I think all that helps shape your reality as a person, the shit you see when you go outside or whatever, so, um, yeah, that's, that's how Oakland impacted me, I would say, just, just a, a, a real look at you know, what my life's like in, in particular when I walk outside my door, you know what I'm saying? So, what got me all the way into the music game is really my big cousin, because he was a music head. You know what I mean? He always listened to a bunch of music. He wasn't in it and then under surveillance, watching under surveillance from the top push as independent group. You know what I mean? Got us to see what the hustle was when it comes to getting out there, pushing out the grind. When we was out there doing the flyers for Beetle Weedle back in the days, the Turfology one on ones, and pushing that grind and watching it get to there and seeing what it took to get to the next chapter, to the next chapter, to see, to figure out the digital programming and yeah. knowing how to uh, market yourself and knowing how to get an ass cap. And so, right there, learning was like being an intern because you was just there and around. If you didn't suck up the game, it was like, bam. So and then I was seeing a bunch of people who was really liking what I was saying, utilizing what I was saying in their tracks. And then I figured, like, if I, I could say the shit myself, you know what I mean? So that was more inspiration from the Bay Area for me dealing with different artists because I dealt with a bunch of artists around here. So that's what helped me. How did, how did you guys link up with FOD? Shit. I linked up with FOD because of them. Like... I didn't, I didn't been listening to Phil. I didn't tapped in with him a couple of times or some shit. And same shit he said when I got through with him is the same shit. Like just, you just gotta work. You feel me? Like he want to see you working. You know what I mean? So when when they came, when they told me the same shit, like man, come fuck with this FOD shit. It was like shit. I already was wanted to. You know what I mean? So them pushing me into that shit and, and, and making it come true and shit. Um, shit, man, for me, it, it was, it's really like a no-brainer, you know, he was my cousin and shit, you know, uh, me, him, Dan, Dre, rest in peace, Dre, Cuddy, you know, we used to all, two at the foot, two at the head, you know what I'm saying, growing up, you know what I mean, so, um, it was just, it wasn't even more so getting hooked up with it, you know what I'm saying, like before Phil was rapping, you know, we was a family, so, uh, you know, once he just took off with it, you know what I mean, uh, that was kind of just a natural thing, it was, it was just, you know, that was a roll of the dice, I guess, that was, that's that's how my life played out, so it wasn't, it wasn't like, uh, I had to meet him, and do all, you know what I mean, so, and shit, you know, nigga been a nigga number one fan, you know, one of the biggest fans, and supporting him what he do and just believing in him and if I ever ask him for something, he ain't never turn me down. So <clears throat> when I decided to get serious, you know what I mean, he just gave me the green light. It was is we go back to when he was standing on the corner with a three X T shirt, trying to bust a knot, you know what I mean? And me moving fast in the lane, me picking we just we been always had a good relationship. We ain't never had no you know what I mean? Cross wires. And it's always been 100, never been 99, never been 98. So, of course, he see the passion I got for music. It's not just being an artist. I like, I play my part whatever part I need to play. You know what I mean? Let's win. You know what I mean? That's my motive. It's like, let's win. Everybody, let's come together. Let's win. So, of course, it was nothing to be like, man, huh, this is a gate. This is a tool for you to 
Because some people will stand offish off of who I am and what I've been through and stuff in Oakland. You know what I mean? They will stand offish by him giving me, like, huh, I'm going to embrace you and this shit, open the door, and giving me the knowledge that I need to succeed in this motherfucking rap game. Because this, this shit ain't easy at all. So that's how I got to being with me. I was already a friend before the business relationship came in. But... Before it was F O D and D N T. It was it was already a friend of Phil. You know what I mean? Phil, gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. So what's up with the music visuals, guys? You guys got any new music videos out? Uh yep, I got I got two new videos out. Uh don't be a, one don't be a menace and um, the other one PTSD. They both on my uh latest uh mixtape I just dropped Wild T D two. That's the year of the dubs, so shit. That's the, uh, that's my latest two uh, visuals I got out right now. And I got some more coming out from that project. They just ain't released yet or, or shot yet, but they, they ain't in the works. Uh, I got a few videos out. Uh, uh, two projects, uh, 12 for 12. So I got like six different videos off of that. Uh, the current project that's out right now, uh, Therapy. Uh, me and Debo got a record, S-T-I-F-O-D. Um, I got the uh, control chaos off of that. Um, me and just bang my brother and me, and uh, me and Beat Weeder got a visual off that uh, 25A all stuff. And uh, got a couple more visuals coming out. Uh, I'm gonna shoot a video uh, Chris the Fifth. Um, we got a song called uh, Energy, and uh, I'm trying to pick the last record I want to do before I uh, start. Uh, Finishing up the final songs for the next project. So, we've been working. They got like, ooh, it's, uh, I got like Sheik and uh, Ray John from my section on there. I got. Uh, YOTD is. YOTD, that's the year of the dubs. Year of the dubs. Yeah. Okay. So I, got, I got a couple people on there. Sheik and Lil Ray John from the, uh, from the dubs. I got Lil Sonny, Trill Youngie on there. Uh, I got a couple people on there. So, so. Sounds dope. What about you? Albums in the works or anything that you just dropped? Um, I got uh, I dropped the 12th and 12th in February, and I think I doubled back with the therapy in like June or something like that. Okay. And then I'm gonna do a, a therapy session too. Um, I'm doing there like seven, eight songs in already on that. Okay. Um, so this should be coming at least by December. I want to try to have it out late this month. What producers are you working with on it? Oh, uh, man, just uh, some nigga. Dirty, I don't know how to say a nigga, man. He was doing beat and shit. But dirty yeah. Decibels. Okay. Um, Sar. Uh, that's really it, though, that I think of. Okay. Off the top of my head. As far as the produ producer stuff. Yeah, but that's what I got going right now. Yeah, when it comes to me, I got uh, Mac and Mop of Value 1 all the way to 3 already out on all digital platforms. I got an album on the way that's already mixed and mastered that I'm going to turn in the field, get my first FOD album out. Uh, on my album, Mac and Mop and 1, 2, and 3, I deal with pretty much the producers will be like Spencer Steven, Boss Life Spence, uh, Vine on the Beat. Uh, what's his name? That was two the the one two the OG. Stan. Stan. Stan was what we go by. I'm saying. Um, I'm, I'm Stan from Sobrani Park it's though. Man. S dot. S dot. S dot on the track. Yeah, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. I get. I use S dot. Excuse me for the for the uh, breach of the good marijuana. Uh, <laughs> and I work with people on there like Cool John, Beetle Weeda, Chris the Fifth. Uh, Cedar from Sabrani Park, uh, Fab is on there, and yeah, and new shit coming for 2022. Where do you guys see yourselves five years from now? Man, I don't know. Five years from now, I'm trying to sell out some shit like Little Baby. I'm trying to, I'm trying to be in arenas and shit five years from now. Man. If not, I'm trying to work with some movies, write my own movies or some shit. Like, I ain't. I ain't trying to just be rapping my whole life though. You know, I've been I've been rapping since I was 
hella young. I've been watching freestyle battles and shit like that. Freestyle with my, pop, my cousins then, like, that's how I really start rapping, like, watching hella freestyle battles and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But, like, five years from now, I probably ain't even trying to rap no more. I'm, I'm about to be 30 in December. It don't mean nothing, man. Look at 40 and them. Hey, 50. Still with the best. 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 Still with Still paying me good. And a nigga so gonna be. keep rapping, but like, I love this shit. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I don't really ever tell myself I'm gonna stop rapping. I love this shit, but like, five years from now, I'm trying to be set to where I get keep getting paid off the old shit. You know what I mean? And start trying to do something else. If not, I'm gonna keep doing that. I like what you said. I mean, you see yourself in arenas. That's yeah. that's perfect. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's I, plan, man. I see myself elevating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like I like the arena. I like the arena spiel. Bro, just gay. You yeah. I mean, that'd be nice. You know, five five figures for a show. You know what I mean? Um, doing doing what you love. Still, I, th- I think. I think anything I do with this opportunity right now is it's, it's going to stay centered around the music. You know, it's going to be the nucleus. You know, I want to be in a, a devo position where I can a and some shit. I got, like, an amazing ear for music. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I always stayed in bang here. You know, he'll tell you, you know, the first time I shook his hand, I'm like, man, we going to do something. And every time I said we was going to do it, we did it. You know what I'm saying? So even with this right here, it's just fruition right here he'll tell you mm-hmm. you know what I mean so him being here you know what I mean and uh, you know working with other artists man like and not just fucking with the rap even fucking with like R&B shit like that um, down the right for people cause I got I got a pen here I don't necessarily have to deliver the, the record myself you know this shit that I wanna do you know what I mean if somebody if you can sing this or whatever you know what I mean? Shit like that. And then I think the music, uh, it sets you up to be able to play in all kind of different other fields. You Thanks. know what I'm saying? You don't got to just stay in the music, but, you know, it's a lot of shit going on. It's cannabis going on. It's, it's California. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, real estate, property, you know what I mean? Gymnasiums, like I like how the soldiers bought that jam town from the niggas in. Now it's Soldier Town, and they be renting that shit out. You know what I'm saying? Midnight League, shit like that. I'm, I'm, I'm also in the recreation. Like, I, I love kids. You know, that was big for me to go to Manzanita Center after school every day and, and just be in Oakland Park and Rec and be able to do a field do at Rainbow. I want us to be able to give out turkeys at Manzanita Center, give out bikes, you know what I'm saying, back to school shit. Change people's lives. You know what I mean? Exactly. You know, so... Five years, I want to be doing shit like that. Five years, I want to be a major mogul in my city when it comes to this music industry by putting people together, making shit happen. Not necessarily being the main artist, but knowing how to deal with everybody and their issues, knowing how to put the issues to the side and everybody come together for the bigger purpose that's feeding our kids, feeding our families. And, and, and letting the bullshit not take over. If it ain't necessarily over the real, what you really supposed to be dying for, then you don't need to be dying for it. So my main part around this motherfucker is to get everybody from North Oakland, East Oakland, West Oakland, to gain the mecca of Oakland where everybody really picks from and try to be like, to work together as one so we could push and get more people to come to our city to see who really runs Northern California. And that's where I'm trying to push, and I hope everybody catch that drift. I think that's a <clears throat> that's a great goal for Oakland. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> we would do really good, like as a mecca, and yeah, in a lot of ways, we should be Black Hollywood. Literally, like Atlanta. Yeah, Literally, real. we dance. We we we, we do, do it all. Everything. We do, we and we're tra- shows, we're trendsetters. We're, we're trendsetters. We're trendsetters. We're set the most trends, to be honest, okay. though, around 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 the San Francisco Bay Area. That's, Is there that's anybody a fact. Um, in Oakland, y'all, y'all are, are in the Bay Area, y'all trying to work with that y'all haven't worked with? I want to work with everybody, from the Young Savers team to Young the Acorns to whoever that's making music that want to be somebody, from all the way from Acorn all the way back to Sabrani Park. 
because it's on we we work better as one because it's different storytellers around here. So if everybody gets somebody that with a mind that could step up and play a part where we could elevate and direct is no cheap. It's nobody being no cheap but the man is just somebody knowing how to play the part for the business to run. If any mafia movies you look at, any gangster movies, they they kept business on attack and they didn't let Destruction. The they, they didn't let destruction stop them from eating bread. You know what I mean? We gotta eat to even live around here. For our kids to go to private schools and the students, if you want this money to generate, you want video, you want these police to act accordingly. We gotta act accordingly. So if everybody can get on that hype, we'll be good. If everybody can know it's business time, it don't matter. It turn it down when it's business time. You know what I mean? Right. You, if you was working for the European people or you was working for anybody else, Safeway, you have to work accordingly to the chain of command. So therefore, you have to build a chain of command within your own people. Right. And people have to understand the chain of command and then we can go up the ladder. Right. You know what I mean? And if we can't do that, then we're going to still be at a standstill for a while, a couple more years. Man, Another decade. You hear me? Specific? I want to work with anybody you know, that, that's... That's, that's talented, you know what I'm saying? I know we <coughs> got a lot of talent, you know what I mean? And they don't, a lot of motherfuckers don't get the platforms to be able to do so. But it's a couple motherfuckers like I really like. I like, um, what's that? What's that people better than that? Cell. What do you call it? Sita. Sita. I, I really like Sita. I like what that Black Lives Familiar. I, I like what that nigga be doing. Shout out to uh, BL, um, Big Vito. Big I, I like his pen from 35th, like motherfuckers like that, like motherfuckers that, that I feel like could push me, you know what I'm saying, like, oh, that nigga just said that, I got to right. you know, because I'm that type of motherfucker, so I'll be the one sometimes they tell me. You like, want an equal face card. Yeah, they tell right. me, like, like, don't rap, don't rap, rap on this one, you feel me, just, you know what I'm saying, but sometimes I like that because it motherfucker push you to be better. You know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't want to be the weak leg on the record. And I'll I be liking to get challenged. So them like two motherfuckers that I can say, like can shock them niggas out because I, I seriously, genuinely like the shit they do. You know what I'm saying? So shock right. them niggas out. I'll rap with anybody. That's how I feel the same shit with that nigga Depot saying. I don't care where you from. As long as you know how to rap, though, because I'm going to get on that motherfucker and talk shit. So, <laughs> straight up. Hey, you ain't got that motherfucker up, but it's a bunch of dope artists around. Lil yeah. Russell. Raw did a motherfucker out there, Vallejo. Uh, uh, what's his name? Big Steppin'. Definitely a lyrical motherfucker. Stunner, Stunner Man. Stunner Man. Beat, beat the gang body from Vallejo. That nigga blasted yeah. them niggas. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's cool niggas. John, the Smop. You can't never mm-hmm. forget the real Smop. Nigga. You know what I mean? Beat the Weeda. Of course, yeah. we're going to work with him. Yeah, Chris yeah. the Fifth. You got a bunch of artists, bro. You know, like he said, Visa. You know what I mean? That mm-hmm. BL family. For sure, no name. The niggas too. You know what I mean? The C, the N. Yeah. To the bands. You know what I mean? Skinny. Skinny. Anybody that's, you know, that's doing that shit and and talking that shit, you know, we we, we ain't hating on nobody. Gotcha. We ain't hating on nobody. All right. So, where can people find you guys online? Shit. Just type in Just Bang. All you gotta do is type in Just Bang on Instagram, Twitter. Google, it don't even matter. Like, you gonna find me. Like, that's just simple. Like, gotcha. I think I, I think I probably got a, I think I got a Twitter too. I think my shit, something about bang. I don't know. Type in just bang, big two eight, be the bang. Be the bang. Know. One of the motherfuckers gonna pop up. Okay. Shit on Instagram, man. It's, it's Fedro Pay, F E D D R O dot Pay, Fedro two syllables, man. Niggas be calling me Fredo. Fredo, man, said drug, that pay on Instagram. Um, I ain't really on nothing else. I don't do the Facebook or the Twitter. I ain't got no snap or nothing like that. And on Instagram only, S-T-I underscore Matt God Debo, one word. Completely, that's where you can find me at. That's where I'm at. That's where the networking at. Let's work. Let's work. Let's work. All right. And are there any last words or shout outs to anyone that you'd like to mention before we end the interview? Everybody. Just shout out everybody. Shout out my niggas right here. Devo. Nigga, uh, Roscoe. You feel me? Like, Bill. 
like this. I just appreciate these niggas. Like, if it wasn't for them, I'd probably be on some stupid shit right now. Like, I, they just they just kept me out these streets. Like, I would have been worried about that shit, worried about my next go get some money or something, you feel me? So, I appreciate my niggas that, that kept my head above water, you feel me? So, like, anybody else, like, my whole my whole section, the top to the bottom, man, shout out to them. My Richmond niggas, shout out to them, but, like, all in all, like, I, I want to shout out my niggas, because if it wasn't for them, I'd probably be on some stupid shit right now. So. Shit, man. Uh, you know, shout out Phil, you know what I'm saying? The whole F-O-D-E-N-T, you know what I'm saying? Shout out Dan, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the whole little top to bottom, man. You feel me? Uh, shout y'all out, you know what I'm saying, for having us here. We appreciate that, man. No. Definitely yeah. appreciate y'all. Oh, shit. That's about it, man. My family. You know what I'm saying? Do that a kid. Shout out to the kids. You feel me? Shout out to the babies. You know? Shout out to mamas. You know what I'm saying? That's about it. Yeah, shout out Vita Weeda. Shout out Mr. Fab. Shout out Chase Down. Shout out D Lo. Free D Lo. Shout out Sleepy D. Shout out my nigga Phil, Big Five Nine. Mm -hmm. Shout out to everybody that fuck with us. Shout outs to the North, East, and West Oakland, man. The whole people that fuck with me, and you know you fuck with me. Shout out to all y'all. You know what I mean? And that's just what it is. Shout out to the old school firm. Straight like that. And that's just what it is, man. You know what I mean? That's the whole Oakland. That's what we got. I gotta push. I gotta push us all. So therefore, shouts out to everybody that fuck with me. Oakland. I'm Jess Bang. Roscoe Fetty. Matt God Debo. And we chillin' with all bay music. <laughs>